When you think of Assassin's Creed, you probably think of Ezio Auditore. The charmingly smug Italian murder machine had so much more personality than his predecessor Altair, and is a huge part of the reason that Assassin's Creed 2 is still considered by many to be the high point of the series. Ezio was so beloved that Ubisoft made two more games with the character before moving on to number three. Which is just not how numbers work, but I can't blame them. Assassin's Creed 2 is the game that molded the long-running series into a shape it would hold for a very long time, both for better and for worse. Hey everyone, and welcome back to an all-new episode of The Completionist New Game Plus, the show where I am re-completing the original 120 games I ever completed here on the channel. More on that in the box down below. Before we start today's episode, a quick reminder that Indie Land 2020 is almost here. It is happening September 25th through the 27th on twitch.tv slash The Completionist. For the first time ever, you too can help out with Indie Land in your own stream. So if you're a YouTuber, if you're a streamer, you can sign up on Tiltify to join us as we raise with our goal, hopefully being 100K or more towards the research of dementia patients out there. So hey, if you wanna join us in Indie Land 2020, check the links on the screen right now or go in the box down below. So since I played it when it first came out and then again for the show, this now marks my third time in my life completing Assassin's Creed 2. Is that too many times? Maybe, but this game is still hugely influential and has always had my favorite story and characters in the whole series right here. Now that so many years and Assassin's Creed games have passed me by, it's possible that my feelings will, I don't know, change drastically, but I somehow doubt it. This is Assassin's Creed, a series where one of the big draws is that you basically always know what you're signing up for nowadays. So once again, here I go embarking on yet another date with Ezio Auditore. Also Destiny for a third time, but mostly Ezio. <laughs> So the first Assassin's Creed game is fine. Its influence on an entire decade of gaming can't be denied, but it was really buggy and frustrating to complete. And even some of the game's biggest fans would probably admit that Altair is a little bit of a blank slate. So when the second one came along, it was a relief to meet Ezio, who's likable and smug and self-absorbed and charming all in equal measure, and who has a real arc where we get to watch him grow and change over a number of years. Ubisoft also streamlined a lot of the little gameplay stuff, and when I think back to the early days of the Assassin's Creed franchise, I think about this game. The first game set a template that the series would stick to for a very long time, but this is the game that perfected that template and truly set the course for the direction of that series that would take over the following decade. They even just straight up made two more games about the guy, because everyone loved him and they were in no rush to get three out, which in hindsight is, you know, kind of fair. But hindsight shapes a lot of how I feel about these games now. At the time, it just felt like the game I had wanted the first one to be like, and the future of the franchise was wide open. And it says a lot that the other two Ezio games were as fun as they were. I've completed them both before, and they definitely provide more of the stuff that works in this game, which is impressive when you have a series built around exploring new time periods, but everyone's still down to just hang out in Italy for a couple of years. Look, the Assassin's Creed series has had all sorts of ups and downs since then, so stopping to watch a trilogy in between two installments doesn't even strike me as weird anymore. They knew they had something with Ezio, and so they capitalized on it. But what I didn't know at the time was that in a lot of ways, this would remain the high point of the series for a while, and may still be, depending on who you ask. I definitely think it has one of the more memorable stories outside of the modern storyline with Desmond, which is, I don't know, fine? No one played these games for Desmond. But he's still here, doing Desmond stuff, like using the Animus to relive the memories of his ancestors while navigating a conspiracy involving Templars, Assassins, and the super shady Abstergo Corporation. Meanwhile, back in Renaissance Italy, his ancestor, Ezio Auditore di Frenze, is avenging the death of his father and brother while training with his uncle to be a super cool assassin. But of course, he runs up against the Templars and Rodrigo Borussia, who wants to use one of the mysterious Apples of Eden artifacts to open a mysterious vault so he can do some some power hungry mysterious stuff 
Assassin's Creed 2 commits to the hodgepodge of sci-fi and history established by the first one, and doesn't really change much in a gameplay sense either. Lots of things have been tweaked and fine-tuned, but the parkour is still parkour, the combat is still counter-based, and there are still a million little things on your map to find and collect. Everything about these games is so imprinted onto the modern gaming landscape that it all still feels overwhelmingly familiar. Or maybe it's that I've already completed this game twice already, but the only thing I'm really nervous about is the thing I'm always nervous about when it comes to completing these types of games. Bugs. Collecting all the feathers and chests and weapons is all well and good, but I've encountered my fair share of frustration when it comes to completing these games. Because amongst the million little things to do, there's always one that decides to just not work. And in this case, I am playing the remastered version on the PS4, so you know there's gonna be some bugs somewhere. Plus, playing this game is the only way I know of to travel back to Renaissance Italy and 2009 at the same time, so that's kinda neat. So the Assassin's Creed series finally started mixing things up with the last few installments, but Assassin's Creed 2 still feels like the definitive Assassin's Creed game, which I mean as both a good thing and not so good a thing. Because Ezio's first outing is definitely the poster child for the franchise's greatest successes, and also its greatest failings. Let's start with the story, because I think that it might be the most successful in the whole series, thanks in large part to Ezio. Plus, the world of Renaissance Italy is just delightful, and the way that real-life historical figures like Borgia or Leonardo da Vinci are folded into the story is awesome. There's specificity to the setting that not all of the games or time periods have. The Middle Eastern setting of the first game was cool, but it feels like the developers had more fun designing this vibrant Italian world. I mean, look, Leonardo freaking da Vinci is your gadget and upgrade guy, which is just so cool. Getting new gadgets is always great, but getting them from da Vinci himself takes it to a whole new level. And then there's the Borgia, the game's main villain, which really pushes the game's blending of historical detail and bonkers sci-fi to its absolute limit. This is a game that literally concludes with a fist fight against the Pope, which isn't really satisfying on a gameplay level, but at the very least, you have to tell yourself, this is freaking hilarious. So if the story is awesome, why is that an issue? Well, the series basically kept trying to recapture the magic with increasingly diminishing returns. Let's just take a look at Assassin's Creed 3, which had a conceptually awesome time period, but never from the level of texture and detail this game finds in Italy. Not to mention the main assassins all ended up suffering in comparison to Ezio, with lots of returns to the stoic, boring archetypes that the first game fell victim to. Then of course there's Desmond and all the modern day Absurgo stuff. Now I actually think this is the only game that nails the balance between these two stories. There's a lot less yanking the player back and forth between the timelines, and all all the stuff with the Apple of Eden and overarching sci-fi conspiracy stuff still feels like it might be heading somewhere interesting, which if you've played the other games, especially the third one, uh, not, no, it's not going in any cool direction. So the series was basically incapable of milking the sci-fi stuff any further, and eventually kind of just stopped trying and let itself just be a historical assassin series, which is fine. But I really appreciated the way they complement each other here. The Desmond stuff isn't frequent enough to detract, and I enjoyed wondering where it all was heading. But now that I know the answer is nowhere, I could sense how unstable it all was from basically the very beginning. But the Italy stuff mostly crushes it, and it sets a high bar that was never really reached ever again even in the other two Ezio games. Because making a great game is one thing, but it's a bummer watching a series consistently try and fail to recapture the magic it once had. Which isn't to say that some of the other games are great. I will always love Black Flag and its pirate-themed shenanigans. But it's pretty telling that even though it's one of my favorites, I barely remember anything about the main character. And on a gameplay level, this game locked the series into a formula that wouldn't be broken until Assassin's Creed Origins many years later. And while each subsequent game would add little wrinkles like new gadgets or naval combat or whatever, this was definitely the game where they figured out what works, and then they just kept doing it. Alright, so going back to Assassin's Creed 2 now, having played so many of the later games, it just feels like more of the same. Even though I rationally know it's the entire reason for most of the elements we're so familiar with. At the time, I remember thinking that the combat here was a huge step up from the first game, but now I'm so used to this style of counter-based combat that it's fine. Same with the parkour, which would be tweaked and polished in later games, but 
mostly just feels the way that it would continue to feel. And it's not this game's fault that it was so good that it got the rest of the series caught in a rut. On its own, as a game, it's great. And there's a reason that it was so influential to both the Assassin's Creed games and open world map games in general. Because on top of getting 100% sync on every memory, there's a huge amount of stuff to collect, but it's way more streamlined than in the first game, and it acknowledges how packed its world is by making the collecting process a little less frustrating. Okay, fine, finding some of the millions of feathers is still a pain, but getting new weapons, capes, and armor is great, because I always love collecting stuff that I can actually use. I also really dig the glyphs hidden throughout the game, which give really neat little puzzles to solve and unlock bits of an overarching video frame by frame. Building out the Auditory Manor is great too and unlocks shop bonuses and all kinds of fun stuff. This right here is another element that later games would try to build on by letting you build your whole town up or even manage armies or whatever you want, but it never felt quite as simple and satisfying as it does right here. When a game is this successful in everything it's trying to do, it's easy to see why later games fell into the trap of trying to add just enough new superficial features while scratching that same itch of scouring a map for treasure chests tombs, and assassinations. Because there is something fundamentally satisfying about watching all those little icons disappear, and it makes these games feel fundamentally designed for completion. Except for bugs. Have I mentioned bugs before? Because playing this on the PS4 mostly ran fine, but you best believe there were some bugs, including one I found in the DLC content, where the game would crash constantly, and at one point I had to literally uninstall and redownload the entire game, which was not my idea of a great time. Same goes for the Ubisoft Uplay achievements, which are not only kind of dumb in the general idea and concept, but literally don't work a lot of the time. And I know it's not 2009 anymore, but when a game wants to push such an emphasis on completion, I don't appreciate when technical hiccups like this make it literally impossible to complete. Especially because I've already done all this stuff twice. Just let me complete your game again, Ubisoft Jesus. Anyways, I know it sounds like I'm complaining a lot, but this is a great game. In fact, almost too great. It set a high bar and ruined the experience of the series for some people, and also locked Assassin's Creed into a formula that it took a while to change. But without that context and taken on its own as a game from 2009, it's just really that good. Ezio's the best. Exploring Italy is awesome, and there are a million little things to do and collect. It's the definitive Assassin's Creed experience for a reason, and still feels like the best balance for what Ubisoft was going with for the series. I mean, there are no pirates, but Black Flag doesn't have Leonardo da Vinci, so let's just call it a tie. Much like the other Assassin's Creed's, this is one of those games where completion is meant to be its own reward. Having all the weapons and capes is great, but there's nothing specifically for 100%ing it, which I was bummed about when I first played it, but at the time, I knew what to expect. There are some smaller rewards along the way, like a dope war hammer for collecting 50 feathers, and the Atatore cape for collecting 100 of them. When you wear it, it raises your notoriety, which is the opposite of helpful. I kind of appreciate that instead of a super useful item, it's just like, wear this and everyone hates you. It's kind of funny. You can also buy Altair's outfit with Uplay points if you're a big fan of both Altair and Uplay for whatever reason. But let's not get Altair's outfit confused with Altair's armor. You get Altair's armor, which is the best armor in the game, when you complete all of the secret tombs that are in the world. Completing all those cool cryptic glyph puzzles you see throughout the world will give you a cutscene of what seems to be Adam and Eve running away from something. I never really understood what it meant, let alone what all the sci-fi stuff meant in the end, but I always liked this cool little cutscene I got. The best reward, though, is just watching your villa get doper and doper as you play. You can see your art, get discounts from fully upgraded shops, and even look at portraits of people who you've assassinated, which is a bit morbid, but who am I to judge? Completing each set of collectibles adds to your villa's income too, so you get to feel some sense of forward progression. But since this is my third time playing this game, it mostly felt like checking stuff off of a list and reminded me of how much more satisfying it was the first two times around. Assassin's Creed 2 is a great game, but I'm not sure it's great enough to justify completing it a third time around in my lifetime. And even though it was the most influential game in the series, it has gotten a little bit dated, so it's not necessarily the one I'd mostly want to revisit if I didn't have to. While I re-completed Assassin's Creed 2, there were 11 deaths, because Ezio still loves just randomly jumping off cliffs and into rivers sometimes, but 
At least he can swim this time around, which is more than Altair could say. 30 codex pages, 100 feathers, 30 paintings, 20 glyphs, 22 weapons, and 5 different sets of armors collected. It's a lot, but when I set out to complete an Assassin's Creed game, I'm still fully aware that completing stuff is a part of the appeal. 51 trophies unlocked, most of which just happened as I played and started collecting everything. But that does not include the Uplay rewards, which were even more glitchy and annoying than I ever remember them being. 35 hours of total playtime, which is probably quicker than either of my other playthroughs because there was a lot less wandering around and exploring. And two hidden blades, which is and always has been better than one. It's just math. So there you guys go. I've completed Assassin's Creed 2 for the third time in my life. I have played so many of these games by now that they all kind of blur together. But this one still stands out for how much it blew my mind when I first played it. And for the fact that Ezio is still definitely my favorite assassin of all time. If you came to these games late and somehow never played this one, you should absolutely check it out because the story, the world, and characters are fantastic. But other than that, this game very much set the mold for what Assassin's Creed games are, and if you're revisiting it now, you basically know what to expect. So, with that in mind guys, I still give this game my completionist rating of, finish it. FINISH IT!